Greetings QCS build fans. Well, this is going to be the epic server lessons learned build. So, um, the epic server build uh, gave us a little bit of grief. Um, basically, it all started with we got a chip that wasn't necessarily bad, but it came in the carrier backwards. Um, last time I buy an OEM chip. <laughs> unless I'm buying a hundred of them at a time, but that won't be for a while. So uh, the carrier, the chip actually came in the carrier backwards. Um, and so when we went to put it in, um, it actually went in and it didn't seat correctly. It ended up damaging the socket slightly. Um, so it wasn't until later when I got ordered a replacement chip that I figured out that uh, it was in the carrier backwards. So, uh, evidently what had happened is the chip had fallen out of the carrier at some point in the warehouse that I ordered it from and got put back in the carrier, but nobody paid attention to how it went back in the carrier. So, so yeah, never buy an OEM chip. <laughs> so, next thing was, um... So the board itself worked absolutely awesome, which was the AS Rock Rack server board. Um, worked just like the first one that we did. Um, didn't have any issues with it, and the board itself was great. Um, so we did find a glitch. So there's a BIOS issue in version P2.6 that uh, does not register the memory in BIOS. Although, you can boot to it, and once you load Windows, the memory actually shows up. Uh, which is weird unto itself, but, um, hey, we don't necessarily need BIOS to tell Windows what to do, so as long as it works, we're not going to worry about it. Um, otherwise, the machine itself runs awesome and has been running great for a while now. Um, so yeah, so quirky weird thing number two was the board. Um, the power supply works awesome. Didn't have any issues with the power supply at all. Um, so, didn't, can't complain there. Uh, one thing we did run into. So, the RX 580 Radeon card that we were going to use is not supported by Windows Server. Um, which was something new that I did not know about. Um, evidently, in about two years ago, um, Radeon, the Radeon group at AMD split their product segments. So you have the Radeon um, RX series, and then you have the WX series Pro, Pro cards. The Pro cards are workstation and um, server cards. Uh, so we had to go to the the 3200WX Pro card uh, in order for to get the extra video memory that we needed uh, to be able to run the virtual desktops. So, so this guy went out. This guy came in. Uh, fortunately, these are about the same price. Uh, this one's only the 3200 is only four gigs of RAM, uh, but that ended up actually being more than enough uh, to be able to do what we needed it to do. So. But, yeah, other than that, um, we'll pull some pictures up on the screen, uh, the finished install. But, uh, yeah, hung it up on the wall. Uh, that went perfectly fine. And um, got it all fired up, and it's fully up and operational at this point. So, without too much fanfare. A um, little bit late on uh, the delivery and everything, just because of all the weird, quirky issues that we had, um, which... Um, it's not expected at all. Um, the first version of this machine that we built uh, last year had basically zero problems. Uh, we threw it together and it worked perfectly fine without a hiccup. This one, uh, it was just like everything was against us <laughs> in trying to get this thing done um, on time. So, uh, let alone getting, you know, quarantined and coming back from vacation and everything else. So, yeah, it, um, all of November just ended up being a total crapshoot to no end. 
So, anyways, um, but yeah, so, um, we'll also show some pictures of the network upgrade that we did. Um, so we ended up, the client had a, um, has two ISP internet providers. Um, and so one, one network was running their office, the other network was running their guest network on their DSL for their Wi-Fi. Um, and then the, um, the office network was being ran off a Netgear uh, Nighthawk, uh, I believe at 3100 if I remember right. It's the lesser expensive Nighthawk router that you can get. Um, they're like about 100 bucks. Uh, off the shelf they're not anything crazy expensive um, and it worked fine um, but with this upgrade the advantage was be to be able to take the two networks and go ahead and bridge them together um, so then that way we could load balance the two and utilize the two because the one issue that this site has is with their new high speed service pro provider it's um, has a reliability time that is basically garbage. Um, so um, it's up only, it only has about a 50 to 60% uptime. And at that point, it's basically random. Now granted, this is a new service provider in, in the area, but still it's pretty unacceptable. Um, so that was where the whole idea was, is coming in and, and uh, bridging the two networks together so that way we could use uh, the guest net what we were using for the guest network and use it as a failover um, network so the only bad thing is, is that one's DSL the other one is um, basically like a low-end um, like a cable network basically um, and it works fine except for like I said it, it just totally drops out like half the time so it's really unstable first thing in the morning. It's really unstable towards the evening. Afternoon, it's not, or midday, it's not too bad. Um, so, yeah. So at least this keeps them up and going, and um, they're not having the runoff hotspot too much. So, but we also did a, a Ubiquiti AC Pro uh, um, access point. Uh, for this site, we ended up doing a 24-port um, Unify Ubiquity switch, uh, not PoE, uh, for this because we only had the one um, access point, and that's the only PoE device, so there was no real point in doing anything, um, doing like a full PoE switch. Um, might as well just save the money. Um, and then we did the um, uh, dual WAN gateway or slash firewall um, that's ubiquity and then uh, set them all up for them so uh, two advantages is one it's more much more stable network than what they had before uh, they tend to have less uh, issues especially now that we've moved everything over to the domain uh, less issues with file sharing uh, network drives and stuff like that they don't drop out all the time uh, the other issue too is now the network is up uh, more consistently, um, even though it slows down when the high speed carrier drops and they're just running on the DSL. There's a huge discrepancy between those two networks. Uh, one's a 100 megs, I believe one's a 100 meg network and the other one's a 10 meg network. So um, yeah, so you really notice it when in the middle of the day the high speed drops off and they're just running on the DSL, it really kills it. So, um, and that's something that eventually, uh, that is slowly but surely getting worked out. But at least the nice thing with the new uh, Ubiquity gateway is now we can actually um, monitor how often the, that the high speed network actually drops in and out. Um, and we actually sent log data to them um, showing that they're only up maybe 60 per percent of the time. And that's a best case scenario. Uh, there are times that they are down more than half of the day. So, yeah. Uh, that ISP needs to get their crap figured out really bad. <laughs> so, <clears throat> anyways. Um, 
So yeah, that otherwise, um, we'll show a couple completed shots of the entire entire build and everything. And other than that, it's uh, we got all the bugs out and everything's working great. So um, if you would like your own network or you would like uh, us to uh, build you a your own server, uh, go ahead and give us a call at the number that will kind of flash on the screen below. Um, or uh, shoot us an email. Uh, usually it's best to give us a call though because uh, uh, email doesn't, I don't have a chance to check the email as often as I would like to anymore because I'm always on the road. So um, if you call me, if I don't answer, leave me a voicemail and I'll get back to you and uh, we'll, get your, we'll get you figured out. But uh, anyways, uh, questions, comments, concerns, uh, please leave them in, um, in the comments section below. Uh, make sure you like, share, and subscribe uh, so we can build this up. Um, this has been doing actually a lot better than uh, I expected it to. We're uh, now about uh, not quite a dozen videos in, and we are already at over 500 views uh, in the first, just a little over the first month of the channel being online. So, um, yeah, it's pretty interesting. This is actually going a lot better than I had planned on. So, um, uh, but we need subscribers so we can get our numbers up um, because I it looks like we're probably be um, profitable long before um, I thought we were going to be so uh, at the current rate so uh, subscribe 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 uh, anybody else that's nerdy or a business person or anything that like to uh, you know have us work on their network or uh, build a server for them or anything like that. Uh, definitely refer us along um, and I will be updating the website at some point I don't know if it's gonna be this month uh, now it being December uh, it may be the first of the year before I finally get time to actually be able to do it um, with the way November went uh, we're really behind on the appliance side of everything um, that and this time of year is just a very busy time of year um, so, yeah, anyways, um, so, but again, um, like, share, subscribe, really, really subscribe, <laughs> we need subscribers, but, uh, the views are great, uh, we're doing awesome with the view count, and the watch, and the watch per hours count, so, um, but there's more to come, so, uh, looks like there's a possibility we're going to be doing a big NVR, um, or network video recorder uh, build so uh, stay tuned for that uh, we're also going to do the wrap-up of the um, dark fleet build um, got all the bugs worked out of that on the new system and it's actually rock and roll and running really really well uh, really wish I could get a 5950x but that's okay um, but anyways and stay tuned because we might be doing more uh, Threadripper builds. Um, seems to be that there's a real uh, a real want and a need. Also, we're going to do uh, probably more mini box builds. Um, so like the Azeroth Industrial uh, 4x4s. Uh, there's the new Mars that just came out. Uh, really want to get my hands on one of those um, and do a build for that. Um, and also looks like the 4x4 um, the second version that just came out of those. Uh, we might be doing one of those too. So, uh, busy, busy, busy times uh, ahead. And uh, on the QCS uh, service and repair side, uh, we're going to do some TV teardowns. Um, so, stay tuned. Uh, lots more to come. Um, I'm going to stay keep busy, busy, busy uh, through the first of the year. So, uh, thank you for watching, and we'll catch you on the next one. Bye for now.